In this video, I will walk you through problem number five from the 2000 AP Calculus exam. Consider the curve given by this equation. Show that dy dx is equal to this expression. So we're just going to find dy dx using implicit differentiation. So let's take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x. So I'm starting with this first term and I'm going to need to use the product rule and I'm going to look at it as x times y squared. Those are the factors. So according to the product rule, um, we will first take the derivative of the first factor. The derivative of x is just 1, which normally I wouldn't write down, but I'm going to do it for instructional purposes. The second factor, we will just leave it alone. So I'm just going to write y squared unchanged. And then we go plus, and we go through it again. The second time through, we leave the first factor alone. So I've got my x. And then we take the derivative of the second factor. So the derivative of 2y, be careful because this is a y and not an x, we have to use the chain rule. So 2y, I've taken the derivative of the outer function, but then I need to multiply it by dy dx, the derivative of the inner function. Moving on to the next term, uh, again, it's going to be the product rule. So I've got this factor and this factor. So taking the derivative of the first factor, I'm going to have negative 3, um, negative 3x squared. And then I'm leaving this second factor alone. And I put a plus. Now I go through it again. This time I'm going to leave the yellow factor alone. So I'm going to have a negative x to the third power. And I take the derivative of the second factor. Well, the derivative of y is just dy dx. And that is equal to 0 because the derivative of a constant is always going to be 0. Um, I think I will go ahead and uh, replace this plus minus with just minus. Let's put all of the terms that have a dy dx on the left side of the equation. So for this first term, um, I see this x in the front, so I'm going to write this as 2xy dy dx. And then we have this term, so minus x to the third power dy dx. Everything else goes on the other side of the equation. So we're going to add 3x squared y to both sides of the equation. So I have positive 3x squared y over here. Then we will subtract y squared from both sides of the equation. So I get minus y squared. The point of having the two terms with dy dx in it on the left side of the equation is so that we can factor out the dy dx expression as a GCF. So I'm going to put dy dx out in the front of the parentheses. That will leave 2xy minus x to the third power is equal to 3x squared y minus y squared. We are solving for dy dx. So to get dy dx by itself, I need to divide both sides of the equation by 2xy minus x to the third power. So this expression will simply end up in the denominator. And this is exactly what we were supposed to show. So that's it for part A. Part B says find all points on the curve whose x-coordinate is 1 and write an equation for the tangent line at each of these points. Since we know the x-coordinate is 1, let's substitute 1 for these x values and see what happens. So we will have 1 times y squared minus 1 to the third power y is equal to 6, which of course is the same as simply y squared minus y is equal to 6. Let's subtract 6 from both sides. Maybe this is factorable. So we have y squared minus y minus 6 
is equal to zero. So y squared only factors as y times y. Um, six can factor a couple of ways, but two times three is the one that we need. We need the middle value to be negative one y, which means I need a positive two and a negative three to get the negative one going. Using the zero product property, um, we can uh, set these equal to zero and solve. That will give us y equals negative two and y equals positive three. If you combine these two y values with the x coordinate of one, you end up with one comma negative two and one comma three. So we've completed the first half of our mission. These are the points on the curve with an x value of one. But now we need to write an equation for the tangent line at each of these points. When they ask us to write the equation of a line, we almost always use point slope form. So we only need two things. We need a point and we need the slope. Well, we already have a point, the point of tangency. So in each case, all we really need is the slope. Let's use the equation for dy dx that we found in part a. This will give us the slope at any point, including one comma negative two. Substituting one for all the x's and negative two for all the y's gives us this. Let's just simplify this down. One squared is just one, so this is really three times negative two, so I've got negative six minus. Uh, negative 2 squared is positive 4, so I have negative 6 minus 4. In the denominator, we just have 2 times negative 2, so that's negative 4 minus 1. But that simplifies to negative 10 over negative 5, which equals 2. So now we're ready to write the equation of the tangent line at 1 comma negative 2, which is y minus the y value, well, because that is a negative two minus a negative is a plus, so I will actually put y plus two, is equal to the slope, which is two, times x minus the x value. So now we need to do that same thing again for the point one comma three. So once again, in order to find the slope, we need to evaluate dy dx at one comma three. So let's substitute one for all the x's and three for all the y's. So one squared is just one, so this is really three times three, which is nine, minus nine, interesting. And then two times three is six, minus one. So of course, this is just zero over five, which is zero. We really don't need point slope form to write the equation of the tangent line at one comma three. Since the slope is zero, that is a horizontal tangent line, which means the equation will be y equals something. Y equals what? Well, it's gonna be the y value of the point of tangency. So y equals three. So that is it for part B. Part C, find the x-coordinate of each point on the curve where the tangent line is vertical. The key to this part is knowing that the tangent will be vertical when dy dx is undefined. So here is our expression for dy dx. This fraction will be undefined when the denominator is equal to zero. So let's set the denominator equal to zero and see if we can solve it somehow. Let's try factoring. So I'm going to take out a common factor of x. So that will be uh, x out in the front. And then we will have 2y minus x squared is equal to 0. Setting each of these factors equal to 0, we get x equals 0. And then uh, 2y minus x squared is equal to 0. Obviously, we cannot 
solve this, but we can simplify it. Let's go ahead and add x squared to both sides. So we have 2y is equal to x squared. And uh, dividing both sides by 2, we get y is equal to x squared over 2. Let's consider each of these expressions one at a time, starting with x equals 0. We now know that dy dx will be undefined whenever the x value is 0. Even though they only asked us to find the x coordinate of each point on the curve where the tangent line is vertical, we still need to find the y value that goes with this x value to make sure that we have an actual point on the curve. So, how would I find the y value that goes with this x value? Of course, I would take this x value and plug it in and solve for y. But if we do that, we're going to have 0 y squared minus 0 to the third power times y is equal to 6. But this leads to the false equation 0 is equal to 6. There is no solution. In other words, there is no point on the curve that has an x value of 0. This means our only hope for finding the x coordinate of a vertical tangent line will come from y equals x squared over 2. Let's substitute this back into the original equation and see if we can solve it. Substituting x squared over 2 for the y values in the original equation gives us this. So let's simplify. If I square x squared over 2, I'm going to get x to the fourth power over 4. But then I need to multiply it by x. So that's going to make this x to the fifth power. Multiplying x to the third power times x squared gives me another x to the fifth power, uh, this time over 2, which equals 6. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 4. I'm aiming to get rid of these denominators, so I'm going to multiply everything by 4. So that's going to give us x to the fifth power minus 2x to the fifth power is equal to 24. So 1x to the fifth power minus 2x to the fifth power is negative x to the fifth power. And that equals 24. Dividing both sides by negative 1 gives me x to the fifth power is equal to negative 24. And then taking the fifth root of both sides, I get x is equal to the fifth root of negative 24. So in conclusion, we will say the curve only has a vertical tangent line at x equals the fifth root of negative 24.